next we're going to proceed to assemble the main shaft assembly. So, obviously, take the head and main shaft, swash plate, shaft collar. Make sure on the shaft collar that you get the ridge toward the bottom of the shaft. Then the upper frame block. Make sure the bearing goes toward the uh, toward the swash. Lower bearing block. Same deal. Watch the bearing. Bearing goes away from the head toward the manger. Small spacer. What this does is this keeps the uh, the one-way assembly from riding against the frame blocks. So after that, gear, and then this is a little one-way locking collar. This is actually what engages the one-way bearing. So get that in there. You have to line up the holes, and this is where the pin can sometimes be a little bit tricky to get in. Sometimes it's easiest if you actually just take it and lightly round it off with a file or a Dremel. Um, I've already actually somewhat rounded this one. The other thing to be watchful for once you get this on here is that it can actually rub on the inside of the lower section of the one way. Now the trick is getting that pin lined up and going in. Sometimes it helps to rotate this around the other direction. For this I use this pair of smooth jawed pliers because you don't want to mar up this pin too much or to make it hard, to, hard for it to go in. When you get that centered, pretty well centered on the in the shaft because it's going to ride inside of the one -way, lower one-way housing. Usually this lower bearing just kind of pops into place. It doesn't actually press fit in there. Once you put this on there, make sure that it spins freely without any rubbing noises. You don't want it rubbing on that pin. Pull this all up, get everything all lined up so the holes are all lined up. You may have to walk the one way sleeve into its position. Easiest just to do that by spinning the head shaft while applying a very small amount of force. You want to get these screws started. Sometimes you'll have to apply a slight amount of pressure to the screw because the holes in the main gear are not actually pre-threaded. Get that pulled down even now. And ideally you want to have these screwed down such that there's no perceivable gap to the one-way assembly between the upper and lower sections of it. Sometimes, if it's a little bit tight to, to begin with, that's going to be okay. It will actually work its way in. Other times, loosening up these just a little bit tends to reduce the captured friction sometimes. But that's probably about as good as it's going to be for right now. The other thing I do usually when I have it at this point is I take and apply a small amount of lube small amount of oil into the bearings. Just kind of let that soak in. I personally don't loot, don't oil or grease the one-way bearing. Your mileage on that may vary. Some of you might like to do that. I personally believe that it might infringe upon the power capability that the one-way will hold through. So that's why I don't put any, any in there. These screws will probably also tighten a little bit different once we're once we have the entire section assembled simply because 
I usually use the screw tension of these two screws to even out the main gear so that it runs spins relatively true. Um, this one isn't actually spinning too bad as it is. Of course, again, it's much easier to see that once the rest of the frame is assembled around this. So it does have a little bit of run out, but it's easiest to adjust that in the frame. The Maxxer side frames actually have small LA heli markings on them. The Ricos do not seem to. So in this case, I'm just going to try and pick which side to work on that looks the best on the outside. Careful with these. Sometimes on the way that they... I'm not sure if they stamp these out. Sometimes they have a little bit of burrs on them. So for the sake of servo leads, Sometimes dressing them up just a little bit with a file will help. Anti rotation, zero mount. That's the mount for the anti rotation. And here's the other servo mount. And for those, there should be two small studs in with the bag. These are a new addition on the Rico kit. Instead of these standoffs having threads coming out of them that screw in, they use small standoffs inside of them. Right, I don't fling them across the room. And the diagram shows for a little bit of Loctite on those. Um, the triangles are interchangeable, they're the exact same part. These are a uh, secondary fuse point for ground impacts. The land, bottom landing gear is the main one, so most of the time you won't have to change these triangles out very often. These are a little tricky to get get started straight, so just take your time when, when you're starting them to try and get them in as straight as possible. case of the canopy standoff, since they are standard machine M2 threads, you want to be a little bit more careful with getting them straight because the threads are finer pitch. One of the neat things about <clears throat> the design of the Rico is that they actually designed these triangles to go into the frame at a slight angle and the front one actually mounts higher in the frame than the back one. What that does it lowers the front end of the frame and it keeps the tail out of the grass when you're taking off a little bit. It's kind of a neat neat uh, change to the design. The Maxer didn't have that design originally. The, the boom sat perfectly parallel to the ground. But I found that I did the same thing with my Maxer except for by adding spacers to the rear landing gear and that keeps the tail up out of the grass enough that I can take off from relatively short grass without too much difficulty.